plastic, let's take a look at the packaging. You can see right here we have the X-Men 97 logo. With a silhouette of all the figures from Wave 1. And it's on every single packaging. And a silhouette of the figure and all the other figures in the Wave. Same generic packaging as usual. Now let's rip open this bad boy and take out this Jean Grey who... Question mark might be the best Jean Grey that we've gotten in a Marvel Legends. Let's see. Here's a look of the figure out of the box. Now let's look at those accessories. Here's her second head with just her hair long and out of the ponytail. You can see the nice 3D printed face sculpt on here. I want to say, I don't know which one I like better. I might have to take a look at closer that when I look at the figure. You see the differences that her hair is longer in this one. She let her hair down. Here are her teeny tiny hands. She comes with an opened hand and a fist for punching Goblin Queen. Um, though I don't know how much punching she'll actually do. Now here's a look at the figure and let's get a closer look at her. Here's a look at the head sculpt and honestly I think the other one looks more like how she does than this one does. I'm not quite sure. You can see just a little bit of those little look looks like a paint right there, but just get a nice flesh tone on there. Put a little with a little bit of red shading on there, and her nice red lips, and then her red eyebrows, and then um, I don't think this is supposed to be blue right here. I thought that was supposed to be her forehead, but. I mean, I guess it looks better than if it was flesh tone. If it was flesh tone, that looked like a gigantic forehead. <clears throat> but no, no, you can see the nice shiny blue and the nice little lighter blue area right here. Looking at the rest of the figure, you can see the nice X Men logo right here with a little bit of marks if it'll pop up here. It looks like a little bit of paint mishaps, but nothing too biggie. And then you can see she does not have the blue stripe right here. And then you can see the little pouches, little pouch pieces are here on her arms. You can see her gaunt, uh, like little forearms. And then of course you get down to the hand. And that doesn't look right. Um, she's not supposed to have blue wrist. Of course they just painted it that way because on the back, so it blends in here. But you can see here, there's a little bit of paint chipping right there. And same thing on the other arm. Yeah, uh, let's take a look at the legs now. Looking at the legs here, you can see the nice sculpted detail of the lines going all the way down. Um, I don't know if it will show up on camera, but the knees and the rest of the legs, the coloring does not match. And the same thing goes for the elbows. I don't know if it will match show up on camera, but in person, the coloring does not match. But you can see all the nice cool detail all the way down. And you can see the little number, little peg holes for feet. And on the back, more sculpted right here. Everything else just kind of plain. And then you can see... The nice metallic blue on there. Overall, uh, there is a little bit of paint mishaps. Other than that, everything looks fine. It looks like a nice Jean Grey figure. But uh, let's let's see how she looks with her accessories. Here she is with the new head sculpt and her fists and her open hand in the other one. I will say, I might like this head sculpt better. This is how she appears in the news show, in the X-Men 97 show. And honestly, if it'll show up on camera, I might like that one better. Not sure yet. Now let's take a look at her articulation. The head is on a dumbbell joint, and it can go all the way around. It can tilt this far that much, and get about that much, and... She can look this far down. She can't really look down. And she can look this far up. And her ponytail is on a... Is also posable. You can go all the way around. And she can whip her hair back and forth. Just like Willow Smith. 
double jointed pinless elbows, bicep swivel, her arms can go just about 90 degrees, and her shoulders can go all the way around with a nice ratchet joint. And the shoulder pad is just kind of on this nice flexible plastic. She can arch back that far, which holy, wow, that's pretty good. I see why Cyclops likes her. She's pretty flexible. But when it comes to bending for forward, it's uh, less impressive. She has a thigh cut and can go all the way around. However, there is no boot swivel. Her leg can go about 90 degrees forward and can't really go back any. But she can do a near perfect split. Her feet can go up and down and they can, can they pivot? Yep, just very tight and has a nice little ratchet joint. And also forgot to mention, normal religions rest articulation all the way around and they can bend. But there's more to a figure than articulation and accessories. Let's see how she looks scaled next to other figures. Here she is with her bestie and former X-Men teammate, Aurora Munro. We can't call her Storm anymore. Here she is with her love triangle. And speaking of love triangles, here's the new one. And here she is with the person responsible. And here she is with everybody's favorite, Amazing Fantasy Spider-Man. Wait, so... Since technically Madeline's a clone of you... Does that make Nathan Summers your son or not? <laughs> what did I do? Don't pick a fight with her. And here she is with the rest of the X-Men. This is an almost complete team. We're missing Jubilee and Beast. Hopefully they're in Wave 3. But knowing Hasbro, that might take about maybe two years. Maybe. Give or take. But here she is with the rest of the X-Men from the X-Men 97 TV show. And here she is with the rest of the figures from Wave 2. Now, my honest opinions about this wave. Very good wave. I want to say it was better than Wave 1. I just have one minor gripe and that includes both waves. We need more accessories with these figures. I don't care if it's effects pieces or something. Executioner and Cyclops, good accessories. Goblin Queen, decent amount. Magneto, Jean Grey, and Nightcrawler, similar more, similar amount, but could have probably used more. Nightcrawler should have had his swords. And Magneto and Jean Grey could use some effects pieces or something. But um, orders of, in order of the wave of which ones were my favorite, it'd have to be probably Cyclops, probably first. And then it probably Nightcrawler. And then, probably Goblin Queen. And then, it's a toss-up between Magneto and Jean Grey. But, and my least favorite is probably Executioner. Not because he's bad or anything, he's just, he's kind of short. But, honestly, I don't think any of these figures are terrible. All these figures are good. I'm happy with all of them. Uh, I just, when I have to, if I had to make a list, it'd be like that. But, I don't hate any of these I would honestly say this is probably better than Wave 1. And this Magneto was most definitely better. I wish they put that, used that body on the, for the classic look instead of using a little short body. But now those were my reviews of the X-Men 97 figures, both Wave 1 and Wave 2. Stay tuned for more reviews. We have a lot more coming up in the next month or so. Uh, for a while, there might just be toy hunt videos because nothing's really out really right now besides the retro card or Spider-Man wave, but I'm getting that soon, and it'll probably just be Scarlet Spider from that wave. Um, but I expect May to be filled with reviews and June because of the DC Multiverse figures that are coming out, and then... July is a Zabu build a figure wave that uh, will be coming out too. So these next few months will be loaded with reviews. 
and but you'll still see the occasional toy hunt um but my final thoughts specifically about this wave is good needs more accessories now let's hope we get more with wave three and let me know what predictions you have for what wave three will be hopefully jubilee and beast are in that wave uh final thoughts about the gene gray figure best gene gray figure that we've ever gotten in marvel legends form ever hands down uh i know people were mad about them taking away the um what is the upper torso articulation but they made up for it with the waist articulation and it's perfect it bends back just far enough and no it never they never been for good enough but with all that said and done people uh remember my cash up is down below in the description and as always have a good one crimson out